There are questions. Is Deion Sanders all in on 2024 because he thinks they have a chance to win or because he's leaving with the Suns? I think it's the first one. You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thanks for making me your first listen of the day. I appreciate it. I saw this interesting notion, and I think I've been hearing a lot of people talk about it and kind of bring it up, and I I myself could see it as a possibility, but I think there's too many people reading into what Coach Prime is doing with his recruiting class in 2024 and not looking around the other programs in the Big 12. For example, let me just talk about this is the this is the idea that sparked it all. So I saw this report, and it says... Colorado's 2024 signing class suggests that Deion Sanders is all in on next season, but what? But then what? And so it was a reporter from On3 named Jesse Simonton said, Colorado signed five high school prospects yesterday. This was obviously right after early signing day. And um, obviously they signed Jordan Seaton a little bit later. It just took a little bit of a, a charade or a game, if you will. And so he says, Colorado signed five high school prospects yesterday, again, right after early signing day. The Buffs still hope to ink five-star offense tackle Jordan Seen, which they did. And he says, that's an unserious approach to a rebuild. Either Deion Sanders has been overrated as a recruiter or he simply isn't interested in doing the work. Either are problematic. And so this has led to a lot of people saying, you know what? Is he going to stick around? What is his plans for after 2024? Because obviously Shadur and Shiloh, uh, are, and Travis for that matter, are all expected to, um, especially Silo, because that's his last year of eligibility, are all expected to go to the NFL. And so the notion is, what is Deion Sanders going to do after 2024? Realistically, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend like that's not a possibility. He could say whatever he wants. Uh, the Billy Napier experience of Florida is going quite disastrous. If Florida comes and throws a bunch of money on Deion Sanders. Will he be able to turn down going to Florida? Now, obviously, he's already said it's not about the money for him. He doesn't need the money. We all know that. But will he turn down going to his home state of Florida? Obviously, Florida is a rival of his alma mater. Does he care? I don't know. That's up for him to decide. But I think there is a part of me where it's like, realistically, I could see him not being as interested in coaching if his sons aren't there. I don't know if he got into coaching because of his sons. But he could have gotten into college football coaching at any point and happened to choose when his youngest son was in college to be um, or when he was about to go to college to that for that to be when he goes the coaching route. So I don't know if he's really all in on coaching college football or if he's all in coaching his sons. I won't say that he's like he's proven me. There's been no reason to show that he will leave it's just one of those things where when his sons leave will his passion be there for coaching still because obviously a majority of his coaching outside of i think his first um season during which was the COVID year at jackson state i don't think either Shadur or shiloh were on the team at that point so i mean maybe he wants to coach just for the fun of it but it's definitely a question but i also think he's going all in on 2024 because the big the big 12 excuse me is pretty much up for grabs. Let's just call it what it is. I think a lot of people are looking at Coach Prime's class and they're like, oh, is he actually trying? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? Well, first of all, he's not the only one that's taking a transfer portal approach, if you will, in terms of the Big 12 recruiting. If you look at the Big 12 overall team rankings, uh, Colorado has the number one class. If you look at where they rank in terms of um, recruiting rankings, they drop all the way down to last in the Big 12. Um, but it is worth noting that they have the highest average of high school recruits. So right now it's Texas Tech with 
the number one overall class in the Big 12. They have 22 commits, one five-star. Their average recruit is 89.11. That is the second highest to Colorado, who has a 93.13, because obviously they got Jordan Seaton, Jalen Miller, and so they have talented guys. And then I think a lot of people are like, oh, Coach Prime only cares about the transfer portal. It's interesting because if you look at Utah, they brought in a 15-person class, ranks as the 63rd overall class in the country, and they obviously are have talked about Kyle Whittingham, has talked about using the portal more. And so I think there's a sense around the Big 12, and you guys could disagree with me all you want, but I think there's a sense around the Big 12 that obviously the playoff is expanding next year. Whoever wins the Big 12, the SEC, the Big 10, um, the ACC, automatic bid. You're automatically in. Where you're seated depends, but you're automatically in. So what better time to kind of go in on all in on one season than the one season where you know what college football is going to look like? I don't think the Florida State stuff with Miami, Clemson, uh, North Carolina, wanting to leave the ACC, that obviously isn't. Uh, conducive or helpful for a college football future where it's going to be all four conferences getting an automatic bid. If all these programs are trying to leave the ACC and go to the big 10 of the SEC, we're basically heading to that two, two super conferences. So obviously a lot of people are buying into this. Now Utah probably thinks they have a great chance. Arizona probably thinks they have a great chance and Colorado probably thinks they have a really good chance. And I think their portal class is a lot better than last year's. And then when you look at how they squared up against Arizona, Arizona beat them after Colorado missed a game winning field goal. Arizona was at full strength. Arizona was in the midst of a win streak and they barely squeaked by Colorado. Now, obviously Arizona is a really good team and Utah will be a really good team next year with Cam rising back. But Colorado went blow for blow with both those teams. Now, obviously, when they beat Utah, they didn't have like 30 people. But again, Colorado is a much improved team. They improved on the offensive line. The offensive line just has to be average because they had the worst offensive line in the country and they were a couple plays away from winning six or seven games. We'll just put it that way. If they have an average offensive line, their defense line is improving. Their linebackers are improving. They just added DJ Lundy. I talked about him yesterday. This Colorado team could easily be one of the top four teams in the Big 12. And then at that point, they just have to win a couple games. Maybe so-and-so loses here, so-and-so loses there. Next thing you know, you're fighting for the Big 12 title. Colorado, I think, should be all in on 2024 because after Shadur Sanders leaves and Travis Hunter and Shiloh Sanders and whoever else, Jimmy Horn, they're going to have a complete rebuild again. Now, obviously, that is Coach Prime's fault for valuing the transfer portal so much. But if there was any season to be all in, it'd be the one where you win the conference and you're automatically in. That doesn't matter if you have three losses or four losses or whatever it may be. If you win the conference, you were in. But it does beg the question. If Colorado kind of flames out like they did this year and say they win seven games, they go seven and five, and it's like, okay, they didn't make any, they didn't make the the big 12 championship and they just kind of, they make it to a bowl game. Sure. That's great. Cause obviously that's huge progress. Is that what the goal was? I don't think so. I think coach prime wants to win. I think the problem is, and I think we're going to find out this year is if the transfer portal method works or not. I think year two of the transfer portal method, where bringing in a lot of transfers compared to not as many high school recruits. I think we're going to find out and determine if it works or not. I don't think you could realistically run it back again after a second year of it not working. Now, I'm not saying he can't use the transfer portal, but I do think if it doesn't work this next year, he obviously needs to put more of an emphasis on recruiting. But then that goes back to the question, does he plan on recruiting past 2025 or past 2024? We don't know. We'll find out. But I think that's the biggest question around Coach Prime right now is what are his goals? What are his plans? Because if he doesn't find success with the portal again, you can't go back and be like, okay, we just didn't get good good players this time we're going to get them next time because there's never a guarantee that one there's going to be the quality of talent that you need at the positions you need and two that they're going to come together i think the biggest issue we saw with the portal this past year they had a culture problem they had a passion problem and they didn't have a winning mentality when your coach is questioning if you love football when your coach is saying i don't know what our identity is during like the week 11 that's not great and i think it's hard to sustain a culture if you're constantly bringing in 
30 new transfers from different programs who are already have kind of like these mentalities of what of how things should be. Obviously, high school recruits kind of have that. But when you're coming as a recruit, you have that little bit of fear because you're like, ah, I got to impress him. I got to impress my coach. I got to earn my role. These transfers, they're coming in. They're like, I've been here, done that. I know what it takes to be at the college level. And so I think that'll be an interesting case. But I do think that a lot more people are all in on 2024 than people realize. I think it's just a little bit of a is Coach Prime kind of using the portal again, which we all saw kind of worked, kind of didn't. And then I also think there's questions about what his future um, in college football is. Does he actually want a future in college football? Does he not? Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, either way, I think it's going to be an interesting season. That's for sure. Because they got a lot better. Uh, but the Big 12, I think, is a weak conference, and I think they should be able to win. I think they should be able to win at least six or seven games with their schedule, but we'll just have to wait and see. Up next, Coach Prime is talking about Florida State. What does he have to say? Why is it true, but why is it bad for college football? But first, a word from our sponsors. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options that includes spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Thank you for making me your first listen every day. My every day is I appreciate you guys. I've seen a lot of support lately. I appreciate you guys. Obviously, the offseason is here, and you guys won't want to miss it because we're going to have recruiting analysts coming on. We're going to have maybe some player interviews. We're, we're rising up the subscriber numbers. I appreciate you guys. We're already at 4,200. Let's get to 5,000 by the new year, huh? Just kidding. That's in a few days. Let's get to 5,000 by the middle of January. That's the goal. I appreciate all your support, all your comments. It's nothing but the best. And comment below if you have any questions that you guys want me to answer because I will do just that. Okay. Coach Prime was on the Stephen A. Smith show um, recently, his podcast, and they were talking about Mike Norvell and Florida State being snubbed from the playoff. And what Coach Prime said is exactly correct and I think it's exactly what's wrong with what the four-team playoff was. And I think it's exactly what's wrong with where the direction of college football is going. It has always kind of been this way, but now we are seeing the true repercussions of it. Uh, so Stephen A. Smith asked his thoughts, Coach Prime's thoughts, about F Florida State's Mike, Mike Norvell and the outcome um, of Florida State being left out. And would it be the same if Coach Prime was the head coach of Florida State, or would it be the same if it was Colorado? And this is what Deion Sanders had to say. Quote, Coach, no Coach, Novell, Coach Norvell, excuse me, Coach is butt off and we can't take anything away from him. But the real question that you would have is, would you leave me out of the college football playoffs? He went on to say, ain't no way in the world we're box office. You've got to see this unless you're crazy. I wish I had the problems that Coach Norvell has. And I think he's exactly right. Realistically, basically, realistically, basically, I'm just throwing out all the lees. <laughs> Florida State got two reasonings for why they didn't make it. One of them was the reasoning that they said, which was your quarterback, Jordan Travis, is injured, and you guys are not the same team. Now, I think that's kind of what college football fans have been calling for for years now. Every year, it's like we're giving it to the most deserving teams, not the four best teams. This year, they pretty much gave it to the four best teams, and people were irate. I don't think Florida State, without Jordan Travis, was a four, was one of the four best teams. No, do I think they were a deserving team? Yes, I do. But again, if you're not valuing that conference, that's also a problem. And I think that's where college football was headed anyway uh, in terms of not valuing conferences as we saw with the Pac-12 because none of the media conglomerates wanted to give the Pac-12 a deal, yet they're preaching, oh, it's so sad, it's so sad, we're losing these conferences. Oh, it's so sad, so sad. If Deion Sanders was coaching Florida State or say Colorado was in a similar situation where they were undefeated when the Pac-12. Now, obviously, Colorado had a much had a gauntlet of a schedule. If they went undefeated, that meant they would have beat Oregon, USC, I think Washington, Oregon State. I'm trying to think of who else. Utah. Like, Colorado would have deserved to be in. But say Coach Prime was coaching at Florida State. We'll just throw him there. No, they don't get left in. Coach Prime draws eyes. He draws viewers. Excuse me, how to sneeze. 
Last one, I promise. I'm a three sneeze most of the time. But if Coach Prime was at Colorado or was at Florida State coaching and they go undefeated, of course they don't get left in. People forget that the playoff is entertainment. College football is entertainment. It is literally people choosing the four best teams, but in the back of their minds, they're like, uh, we don't want to we don't want to repeat of last year. A TCU getting the, the amount of hate they got for last year's loss to Georgia was absolutely absurd because they beat Michigan. If you're going to fault anyone for TCU last year, fault Michigan. If Michigan was so good, they should have beat TCU. And if Michigan was so good, they would have beat TCU and made it close with Georgia. But obviously they weren't that good. So I think the problem with college football, and people don't realize this, there's usually not four championship caliber teams. There's really not. If you look at, Every year of the college football playoff, uh, I forgot the number. I wrote it down. I tweeted about it. Um, it was like over half or majority of the first round games or the championship games were separated by double digits. It just is what it is. There's rarely ever four championship caliber teams. And I think if Florida State had Deion Sanders as their head coach, they probably would have got him. I really think so. Because one, he draws eyes. It'd be the most, most watched college football playoff ever because everyone wants to see a him succeed b they like college football or c they want to see him fail and so no other coach has that sort of effect that coach prime has where it's like i want to see him succeed so much or i want to see him fail so much coach prime has that effect no one else does it's just one of those things but for people to kind of be like be like oh no he's wrong he's wrong he wouldn't have made it if he was there he, he would have and it would have been stupid to leave him out it was stupid to leave Florida State out because obviously they were undefeated conference champion, but I get it. The playoff committee had already set the precedent that they were leaving out a team that they didn't feel was good. They kept saying it's about the best teams, not the most deserving teams, and everyone was like, oh, true. That's so true. And then when it happened, they left out a deserving team for a team that they thought was better. People threw their arms up and were like, dude, what the hell? They were deserving, and they were like, yeah, we said they we didn't think – we were going with the deserving teams. So I think a lot of people kind of miss the hints. They miss the tea leaves or the reading on the tea leaves, whatever the saying is. But for people to think that coach prime wouldn't be in the playoff, had his team, um, had he been coaching at Florida state with the same exact results or Colorado, if they were undefeated or had a one loss, he would have been, it's, it's a television product. They want viewers. They want network numbers. They want to get all this up. They want money, and that's just how college football works. Believe it or not, college football is motivated by money. Shocker, I know. It's one of those things. When we come back, we're going to be talking about where the new, the four new Big 12 teams rank in terms of recruiting in the Big 12 and where they ranked in terms of the Pac-12 because I thought that was interesting. I think we're seeing a kind of a weird shift in team building. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you for making me your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. It's Locked on Buffs. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We're talking about recruiting. We're talking about where everybody in the Pac-12 kind of ended up because obviously the Pac-12 is gone. But I thought it was interesting to really see where they shaped up in their new conferences. Because let's just say it didn't go well for everyone. Um, it didn't go well for most, actually. Oregon was the, really the only one uh, that did anything special. But I thought it was really interesting. So I'm going to go through. I wrote about this over at my site. You guys should go check it out, read a, a little bit about it. Uh, I broke down where they ranked in their new conference, where they ranked in the Pac-12, and where they ranked nationally. Composite ranking only. So this is not including their transfer portal class because obviously um, we're talking about high school recruiting. So... Up first, obviously bringing out the rear, is Colorado. They rank last in the Big 12, last in the Pac-12. They ranked 101st nationally. Coach Prime has a infatuation with the transfer portal, and I think he's going to use it. I think this year should be kind of like the, the final hoorah if it doesn't work, and if it does work, I still think he should put a, a premium, on, premium on recruiting, but that's for him to decide us to watch. Oregon State, they ranked 11th in the Pac-12, um, which obviously they're staying in the Pac-12, and which means they're second in the Pac or their new conference. I guess they'd be second because it's obviously just they've been Washington State, 86 nationally. They lost their head coach, lost a few recruits to Michigan State, UCLA. This does not shock me at all. They ranked 17th in the Big Ten, which is um, one spot away from last place. They ranked 10th in the Pac-12, 71st in the country. 
Chip Kelly was supposed to be fired prior to the USC game. All of a sudden, he beats USC, and they're like, oh, you're back. It's great. It's a good thing. Not sure what they were doing. He doesn't have a lot of recruiting success already, and he was already reported not having reported to not have a lot of offers being sent out um, for the 2025 class. So that'll be an interesting debacle. Did they just wait a year to fire him when they could have had Jonathan Smith? Probably. Big 12, I mean, excuse me, Utah, Big 12 ranked 13th, Pac-12 ranked 9th. They too have said that they're valuing the transfer portal. They want to add experience. Washington State, technically the first ranked class in the Pac-12 out of them in Oregon State. They rank 8th in the whole Pac-12, 62nd nationally. Cal ranks 14th in the ACC, 7th in the Pac-12, which is pretty solid for them, 6th nationally. Uh, but they do have the number 25 uh, transfer portal class. Similar to them, um, who is another program valuing the portal and kind of trying to rebuild the recruiting, is Arizona State. They ranked 8th in the Big 12, 6th in the Pac-12, 52nd nationally, but they have the number 9 portal class. Arizona ranked 6th in the Big 12, 6th in the Pac-12, so they're kind of, that's pretty ironic, I thought. They rank 56th nationally. They don't have a really good portal class, so Arizona is just kind of, having a meh off season, I guess you could say in terms of recruiting and portaling, they are more so valuing quality over quantity. And I think that shows in the rankings, Washington, I thought Washington would be better just because obviously they're making a playoff run. You kind of got to build off of that. You would think, but they rank 10th in the big 10 fourth in the pack 12, 36 nationally Stanford ranks six in the ACC third in the pack 12 30th nationally. They obviously Stanford going to Stanford is something that I've learned even when they're bad people want you want the education so obviously there's probably a thousand recruits you have to find 25 that are good at football or around I guess now you can find as many as you want we'll say 25 30 recruits that are good at football and are smart enough to get in which obviously I like those odds people are always going to be interested in going to Stanford as long as they're playing football at the highest level and they're in a power four conference USC ranked fifth in the big 10 second in the Pac-12, 18th nationally. Oregon ranks second in the Big Ten behind Ohio State, first in the Pac-12, and they have a number six class in the country. So had these, I think these programs stayed in the Pac-12, they would have all kind of fared recruiting-wise better. Um, and their new conferences are not as dominant recruiting-wise. Um, there's just clearly something missing. Maybe it was the what's going to happen to the future of the program. And maybe it's a lot of programs are leaning on the transfer portal more than the recruiting cycle, um, the high school recruiting ranks. I mean, just because it's easier to plug and play than it is to develop and hope that these guys stick around for multiple years because of NIL, or if they don't play right away, these kids leave. So a lot of interesting things. You tell me what your biggest takeaway was, because mine is there's a lot more value on the transfer portal. And there's a lot more success not being had for these Pac-12 teams than there are other teams around the country. So you guys let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Locked on Bus and making me your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.